Winners and Losers is about how ordinary Americans uh, formulate their opinions on international trade. It's a very complex topic, and most of the studies to date have focused on economic perspectives on international trade, and that's usually not how ordinary Americans go about figuring out how they feel about it. At one level, the idea of trading things is something that everybody understands because we trade things with our neighbors, we trade sandwiches at lunch, and so forth. International trade is obviously a far more complex kind of thing, and it's very difficult for most Americans to envision what supply chains look like, how their personal lives are affected by international trade. What's surprising in many ways is that how people evaluate another country as a trading partner is very similar to how they evaluate a friend or a neighbor. Uh, they look for similarities in terms of values, in terms of uh, everything from race to whether the other country is a democracy or not, whether or not they share uh, religion in common. All kinds of dimensions of similarity play into whether or not people feel they can trust another country. And just as people are more likely to be friends with one another when they have similarities, unfortunately that means that there are more negative attitudes toward countries that seem more foreign to Americans. Just as we find it easier to trust people who are like ourselves, we find it easier to trust other countries that are like our country as well. The partisanship associated with favoring and opposing trade has changed pretty radically uh, since Donald Trump came on the scene. Traditionally, people thought of the Republican Party as more trade supportive. Trump was obviously not very trade supportive. And yet, one of the most fascinating things in the book is that trade attitudes among Republicans end up being the highest they've ever been by the end of the Trump administration. So what we see is it's not so much trade per se that Republicans oppose, uh, it's trade under the control of a Democratic president. We've seen the same thing. Republicans dropped in their trade support shortly after Biden was elected and Democrats increased in their trade support. So given how complex an issue this is, people simply feel more comfortable when a partisan of their own party is in charge. Although people certainly care about the availability of jobs in the United States, they care even more about international peace. And what we find is their perceptions of how trade contributes to international peace are the most important of all. Jobs are great, but international peace is what they value most.